You are welcome to the winning platform tagged Winning by Knowledge. The Holy Spirit is a divine facilitator, but not a replacement for the human brain. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are three keys that propel great success. The grace of God has brought us freedom, divine enablement, and unlimited favor. However, the grace that is abused will be lost. Any knowledge acquired but not applied has no profitable value. This platform, Winning by Knowledge, teaches a balance between personal responsibility and spiritual enablement as keys to unlimited success. You are welcome to this edition of Winning by Knowledge, anchored by Dr. Victor Falak, a pastor, a teacher, and a human resource developer. Empowers can guide you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you once again to this second episode looking at what is grace. We saw the first part and today we shall be looking at the second part, you know, uh, of the definition of grace. Father, we thank you again for this great opportunity, you know, to read from your word. We ask for grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. What is grace? Grace is that invisible divine force that sustains one in troubled times. Now, in the first definition, we talked about grace as a divine force. Again, in this second definition, we're talking about grace as a divine force, you know, but with an extension, you know, of what? Of that force that sustains one in troubled times. You know, uh, in our lives from time to time, you know, we face one challenge or the other. And in the process of these challenges that we find ourselves in or we go through, you know, at times the challenges, you know, will be so troublesome that you are almost broken down, but you're still alive. At times you feel as giving up, you're still alive. At times it's like you can't even believe that what I went through, you hear people say, was it me? Am I the one that came out through this? I can't believe that it was me that went through this and I am out of it. So in every trial that you go through, you know, and you survive the trial, there's a force that sustains a man in the process of every trial in life. So when you go through any trial and you survive the trial, it wasn't about you. You survived the trial. It wasn't about your technical know-how. It wasn't about, you know, uh, your technique. It wasn't about your academics. It wasn't about, you know, how strong you are as a man, you know, as a person or whatever it is. But there's that force that sustains every man when he is going through trials. And at times the trial will be so intense that you can't even explain how you are able to survive it. And this force is called what? It's called grace. And that is why we said what? Grace is that invisible divine force that sustains a man, that sustains a woman, that sustains a king, that sustains a queen, that sustains a father or a mother, a brother or a sister in troubled times. That there's so much trial and trouble around your life. That somehow you can understand how the trouble didn't take your life. Somehow you cannot understand. You can't explain how it was not you. But somehow you survive it. Yes, it wasn't you. But there's a force that acted within you and around you. There's that force that acted that you couldn't see the force. That's why it's called what? Invisible force. And that force is divine. It is divine because that force is released by God. And that force keeps you. That force sustains you. That force keeps you from falling. That force keeps you the inner strength that you need to keep going. And that force is called what? It's called grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 9, I'll be reading from there. The Bible says, Unless I should be exalted, above measure by the abundance of the revelations a turn in the flesh was given to me that is apostle paul talking a messenger of satan to buffet me or to trouble me lest i be exalted above measure verse 8 concerning 
this thing i pleaded with the lord three times that it might depart from me verse 9 listening to what he said and he that is god said to me my grace is sufficient for you my grace is sufficient for you and that is the part that i'm more interested in my grace is sufficient for you and so we can see from where we read there paul went through trouble and he was so much trouble that he prayed to god he cried to god because of the trouble that he went through and when he cried to god god answered his prayer and when god answered his prayer what did god tell him god told him that my grace is sufficient for you my grace is sufficient for you that means that in troubled times you know there is a force that is called grace and that grace god is saying that what that it is sufficient that when you are going through troubles just like apostle paul and you are praying to god yes god is hearing your prayer you're praying to god yes you're still alive because of god's grace you pray to god don't say god didn't answer your prayer during your troubled time if god did not answer your prayer you wouldn't be alive today if god didn't answer your prayer you would have been consumed you know uh, by that trouble that you found yourself through you are still alive because there's a force that is keeping you you're still alive because there's that divine power or that divine force that is sustaining you in this troubled hour and that divine force is what is called the grace of god if you feel you're going through this and another person went through it and the person maybe committed suicide and is not more alive and yet you are there despite all the troubles much more than someone went through and you're still alive you didn't take your life you're still alive you're still on course you are still having direction you have not given up then there's something that is sustaining you and that thing that is sustaining you is a force that you can see that force is divine that force is acting upon you that force is acting from the inside of you to strengthen you and that divine force is the grace of god that sustains one in troubled times and so it is important for you to know you know that the grace of god you know is what is that force that sustains in troubled times in deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse number 20 we're going to be reading from there again and we shall see how the grace of god sustains the israelites in the land of egypt during their troubled time 4 and verse 20 the bible says but the lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace out of egypt to be his people and inheritance as you are this day now you can see what happened in the land of egypt god likened it to what to an iron furnace if you hear furnace think about intense fire if you go to where they make bread you know and where they put in bread into their furnace the place burns so intense stay tuned books books and books great books on leadership such as over 70 reasons why leaders fail understanding leadership roles skills and styles over 36 keys on how to become an impactful leader, how to develop good character, behavior, and habit, over 30 indicators of leadership failure and correctional measures, and lots more, all authored by an exemplary leader, teacher, and resource person, Reverend Dr. Victor Falak. Pick your copies today at Glamour Bookshop, Magami, Jalingo or at www.godsgraceandlove.org forward slash books or call 081-144-22228 Words of Wisdom for Today The value of an input not converted into output is zero. Extracts from the book You Need People to Succeed authored by Reverend Dr. Victor Falak. Welcome back. And so the Bible described the trouble that the children of Israel went through in the land of Egypt as what? Well as furnace, as a burning furnace. Where we read 
where we read earlier in the book of Exodus. Now God appeared unto Moses in the burning bush. Again, that was an introduction or also showing the significance of the grace of God. Now the Bible says that what? That the bush burned, but it was not consumed. The bush burned, but it was not consumed. In another word, while the children of Israel were burning in the iron furnace in the land of Egypt, they were not consumed. They were still alive. They went through trouble. They were enslaved. They were there for 400 years, yet something kept them alive. And that thing that kept them alive was what? Was the grace of God. And we saw how that grace of God was demonstrated at the burning bush, where the bush was burning and the bush was burning, and yet the bush was not consumed. The children of Israel were burning in the furnace of fire in the land of Egypt, and yet they were not consumed. Just like today you're listening to me, you may be, you know, one of those that are going through trials today. And yet something is burning in your life. Trials, challenges, trouble burning in your life. And yet you're still alive. The reason why you're still alive is because grace is available for you. The reason why you're still alive is because God is still there for you. The reason why you're still alive is because there's still available grace that is alive to keep you, to strengthen you, you know, and to sustain you above all the trouble that you will think about. And so God told Paul that my grace is sufficient for you. And God is telling you that you are listening to me this hour, that my grace is sufficient for you. And so if you're going through trial moments, it is not the sorcerer, it is not the witchcraft in your village that has the answer. Whatever that it is, God said, my grace is available. There are people that have walked out of the grace of God to go and look for alternatives. And these alternatives have consumed them. The alternatives that men have looked for, you know, the alternatives have consumed them. Don't be ignorant and don't look for alternatives. When God said, my grace is sufficient for you, God is saying that don't look for an alternative. What I have is enough. What I have is available. What I have can satisfy you. What I have can take care of you. What I have can sustain you above the trouble that you are going through. And so whatever that you are considering and you are thinking of jumping out of the presence of God, God is saying, don't do it. Whatever voice that is telling you to walk out of the presence of God, tell the devil it is too late. Now that you have the word of God, God is encouraging you. The word of God is encouraging you this hour. Stay in the presence of God because God says my grace is sufficient and so if people if you are going through fire you know the children of Israel went through fire and their fire was described as what iron of furnace that means it was intense it was burning it was intense it was burning and so where we read in Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 2 we saw the clear instance there you know that the fire you know that there was flame and the grass was burning and the grass was not consumed whatever that is burning you and i'm telling you that it will not consume you it will only make you better it will only refine you it will only bring you forth as gold job said when he has tried me i will comfort he will bring me forth as gold and so just like you put a crude a gold in a furnace in a fire it burns and it burns and it burns and at the end of the day what happens it brings it, you know, as refined and as good as the gold that we are using today. It refines it as good as the silver, the diamond, and all the precious stones that we use today. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that whatever trouble that you are going through, it is not new. I'm going through the burning furnace. I want to tell you that the children of Israel went through. It is not new. If God saved them, God can save you also. I am going through trial. To Paul, it came once. It came twice. It came three times. He said three times he was troubled and he was buffeted. He was troubled in his flesh. He was inflicted in his flesh by Satan. The Bible said by the agent of Satan. But yet God told him that my grace is is sufficient for you my grace is sufficient for you so god is taking you out of that trouble god is taking you out of that trial god is taking you out of that challenge so i encourage you brothers and sisters listening to me don't allow the devil to give you an option because this is where a lot of people miss it 
when they are going through trial, sex will come as an option. If they are going through trial, alcoholism will come as an option. It is not the best option and don't go for it. So when God says my grace is sufficient for you, that means that you don't need alcoholism. When God says that my grace is sufficient for you, that means that you don't need sex, you know, to take away your stress. When God says that my grace is sufficient for you, that means that you don't need occultic organization who will tell you that they have a solution to your problem. What God cannot do for you, no man can do for you. No occultic manipulation can do for you. What God cannot do for you, no devil can do for you. What God cannot do for you, don't let any witchcraft, wizard, sorcerer, any medicine man, whoever he is called by any name, what God cannot do for you, they cannot do it for you. And so God is saying that I am sufficient. I am sufficient. My power is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My hand is sufficient. I can save you. Jesus is sufficient for you. The Holy Spirit is sufficient for you. God is sufficient for you. Don't look for an alternative elsewhere. Don't run elsewhere to look for an option. Hold on to God. Stand with God. Hold on to Him. Believe Him in faith. Hold on to Him. Stand in prayer. Hold on to Him. Walk in the wisdom of God. Hold on to Him. Seek for divine counsel. Hold on to Him. Because God is available. God is saying, don't go for that option. Whatever option that any man has given you. If you are there working with an option, that is an ungodly option. Get out of that option. God is calling you. Come back. He said, I have my grace and my grace is sufficient. That if I save Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the burning furnace, God is saying, I am here and I am well able to save you. If God can save the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt after 400 years, and today we still have the Israelites, the Jew today as a testimony that they were a set of people that were, you know, that went through the burning furnace for 400 years. And today they are here with us. It tells you that if they have 400 years and you are on, it's not four years, then God can do it for you. If they had 400 years and you are on, it's not four months, then God can do it for you. If they had 400 years and you are on, it's not four days, then God can do it for you. If God can raise the dead, then it is not your problem that God cannot attend to. Hold on to God. Irrespective of the challenge that you are going through, God sees, God knows, God understands. When he saw the man by the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, the Bible says, when Jesus saw him, Jesus knew that he's been there for a long time. That means that God sees when Jesus saw him. God sees when Jesus saw him, he knew. That means that God knows. So God sees and God knows that how much is your commitment to stand with God in the face of this trial. So I want to encourage you that stand with God. Don't give up and God will not disappoint you. He did not disappoint David. He will not disappoint you. So I'm going to be praying for you that are going through trials at this hour that God will keep you and God will sustain you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your son. I pray for your daughter that is watching this telecast at this very hour. That father, bless him in the name of Jesus. That whatever trial that you are going through, grace is available for you. In the name of Jesus. I pray that this trial shall keep you. In the name of Jesus. That trial shall not consume you. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you receive strength. In the name of Jesus. Receive grace. In the name of Jesus grace to come out of that trial in the name of jesus and whatever that has kept you down by reason of that trial is my prayer tonight that that chain of trial that has kept you here the lord break it in the name of jesus the lord who with his mighty hand rescued the children of israel god is rescuing you in the name of jesus god is bringing you out in the name of jesus that marital challenge god is bringing you out in the name of Jesus, that financial business, difficulty, challenges, God is bringing you out. In the name of Jesus, that trouble that has kept you where you are and you've cried all day long and all night long. God has seen your tears and he's saying the night is over. 
and the morning is here. Your joy is here. Your celebration is here. Begin to celebrate and begin to believe God in faith that God has saved you out of this trial. And it is well with you and it shall be well with you. The Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with thee. And my last word to you is that it is well with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, man.